Good evening, everyone. Apologies for the slightly uh, delayed start to this meeting. Uh, welcome to the planning meeting of Tamworth Borough Council. Uh, people, uh, committee members, officers, and those who are speaking uh, tonight, can I remind you to please turn your mic on uh, when you're speaking and turn it off when you're finished. Uh, look for the red light if it's on. The microphone is live and will be picked up by the live stream. Uh, please also note that this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the internet. I'm going to move straight on with the agenda. Apologies for absence. Uh, we've had apologies from Councillors John Wade and Councillors Dan Maycock. Other than that, it's a full house. Agenda item number two, uh, appointment of Vice Chair. Does anybody wish to nominate anybody for Vice Chair? Councillor Goodall. Thanks, Chair. Um, happy to nominate uh, Councillor Andy Cooper. Anybody to second that? Yes, Chair, happy to um, second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Claymore. Any other nominations? Can I have a show of hands in support of Councillor Cooper, please? Thank you very much, Councillor Cooper. If you'd like to remain there for the time being for the next meeting, you can come join, uh, sit next to me, which is, I'm uh, sure, will be a pleasure for you. Uh, item number three, minutes of the previous meeting, which are on pages 5 to 14 of uh, the agenda pack. Can I have someone to move them as a correct record, please? Councillor Goodall. Happy to move. Anybody second? Thank you, Councillor Box. Uh, I'm aware that a few people weren't on the committee last year, uh, so if you don't wish to vote on this item, please don't. But can I have a confirmation of hands uh, regarding the uh, accuracy of the last minutes, please? Councillor Harper, you were at the meeting. <laughs> Councillor Rogers, you were as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there'll be a uninstructed demo services to sign them as a correct record. Item number four, declarations of interest. Uh, on behalf of the whole committee, I would like to declare an interest in uh, planning application 0222-2022, 12 to 13 Market Street. We are all elected members of Tamworth Borough Council. And as we know, this project was part of the wider Future High Streets Fund. Uh, so I just don't need to be uh, minuted for the records, please. Any other declarations of interest? Nope. In that case, we'll move straight on to the applications for consideration this evening. <clears throat> and uh, that was the one I've just uh, declared an interest on behalf of the whole committee for. The first one is planning application uh, 0222 stroke 2022 12 to 13 Market Street. I'll pass over to Sally for this one. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, this application is for a replacement shop front and windows and demolition and replacement of a single storey rear extension and installation of plant and associated works at 12 to 13 Market Street. Um, just by way of introduction, for those of you that don't know the site, if you look out of the window behind the uh, screen over there, it's actually just behind you, so no excuses for not visiting the site. <laughs> Um, so the proposals, if we can look at the next screen, yeah, that's, if we just go back one actually, Glenn, thank you. So that's just indicating the, um, the position of the, the property, 12 to, 12 to 13 Market Street, which is the, the red outline. You can see that in, in relation to the town hall, hall in which we're sitting and uh, the castle and the castle grounds adjacent to it. So it just gives you the general picture. So the proposals, they're for external alterations and, sorry, replacement of the shop, of the shop front. So it's a relatively minor type of application, um, shop front and improvements. Um, but the application is brought before the committee due to its connection with the council's future high streets master plan where the refurbishment of the buildings are an integral part of the objectives to enhance the environment and viability of the town centre. As such, it provides the key to other developments within the wider scheme. The works to the premises represent one of the essential first phases in delivering the objectives of the Castle Gateway within the Master Plan. The proposals allow for the existing nationwide, which is the building behind, behind this building, um, 
existing nationwide to be re relocated to the application site and allowing the enhancement of the Castle Gateway and other elements of the master plan to come forward. The application therefore supports the wider objectives of that master plan. So in terms of the application, there's, there's no actual change of use proposed um, as the former use is, was retail and a cafe um, and the future, future proposed route proposed use is as a building society and they, they all fall within class E of the use classes order as an appropriate town centre use. So there's no change of use involved. Um, in addition, it's worth pointing out um, there are some internal works proposed as part of the project, but uh, these do not require planning permission as they're internal and are not therefore being considered tonight. So the proposals that you have, um, the external alterations, of the, the building known as the Peel Cafe is a pair of Georgian shop buildings dating from the mid to mid or late 18th century. The works is sem essentially comprise the rede redesign of the shop front, <coughs> new windows to the rear elevation, um, some repairs to the roof and a replacement single storey extension to the rear of the property. The replacement shop front has been designed to be a traditional timber shop front, as you can see on the screen, uh, in, in an historic style. It's got store risers, fascias, flanking pilasters and corbels, um, and various new glazing. Um, some of the materials and the joinery details of the windows would still need to be submitted, um, but the design and the principle of the new frontage and the windows have been assessed by the council's conservation officer and uh, she's expressed no, no objection to this element and advises that it will improve its appearance within the street and not cause harm to the historic environment. In, in policy terms, that means it's compliant with policies EN5 and EN6 of the local plan, both of which are detailed in the report. So as regards the historic environment, environment um, we have to give consideration, and you as a committee have to give, give consideration to the of harm to the character and appearance of the of both the conservation area in which we're in, and the significance of any surrounding listed buildings, which includes this building that we're in. Um, the report does go into some detail about the policy requirements, so they, they are can be rather complex, so hopefully it explains it in a bit more detail. But basically, in determining any planning application on heritage matters, uh, the Planning and Listed Buildings and Conservation Areas Act of 1990 states that special attention shall be paid to the desirability of preserving listed buildings and preserving or enhancing the character or, or appearance of conservation areas. So in this instance, the buildings are not listed buildings, but they are locally listed. So they're recognised as, as being of local townscape or historic interest. Um, they, they do contribute to the historic street scene, fronting Market Street, and it's setting within the, Tam the Tamworth Town Centre conservation area. There are listed buildings nearby, as, as I said, including this building and properties opposite. And of course, beyond is the castle and the scheduled mon monument around it of the immediate surroundings. So the impact of the proposed development needs to be assessed and the significance of the buildings and their setting within the conservation area are detailed within the supporting heritage statement that was submitted with the application. It's a very detailed statement that gives a lot of history um, and also assesses the significance of, of this building, which is, which is defined as an understanding of what makes a special, a pla sorry, what makes a place special. So the proposals for the site include the removal of the current late 20th century shop front, which you'll see at the moment, that's also has, has replaced earlier versions. It's replaced, been replaced several times. Its removal there therefore has a negligible impact on the character of the, of the building and of the conservation area. And the, shop, the new shop front will integrate with the character of the, the surrounding historic buildings which will enhance the coherency of the marketplace and have some beneficial impact. 
The statement, the heritage statement, also assesses, assesses the contribution to the setting of nearby listed buildings and cons considers the impact of the development proposed on both the conservation area and the listed buildings and other heritage, in, heritage, heritage assets. It concludes that the overall impact of the proposed works is positive and that the application proposals accord with the requirement to preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area and the settings of the relevant heritage asset, assets. Um, so there's the, the proposed new shop front is, is the one element and it will be of suitable traditional materials and more traditional traditional ex design than exists at the moment and as such will enhance the character of the building. Um, the internal works have no impact have no impact on the the character and at the rear the new windows and replacement extension will also serve to enhance the building although not in view of the street but they will enhance the character of the conservation area generally and tidy up the currently vacant site if you just see the uh, picture on the screen just shows the proposals for the, the rear elevation which say you can't see from the, from the street but if you can see the, the photograph it shows a, a pretty untidy site at this at this stage so it will enhance that the rear elevation has modern deteriorating render inappropriate UPVC windows and unsympathetic additions such as the fire escape and the ladder um, all these unsympathetic additions and the UPVC in the, UPVC windows will be removed and, and replaced accordingly. So the, ex the proposed extension, uh, which you can just see the rear elevation of there, uh, will be an improvement in, in the quality and the, of the current range. <coughs> um, so overall, the external changes to the front elevation will serve to give the building a more attractive historic character that better blends with other historic buildings on the marketplace, as well as providing more suitable conservation materials that will ensure the long-term condition of the building. The changes will have an overall beneficial impact on the locally listed building, conservation area and listed buildings within the setting of the site. In addition, the improvements will bring a vacant building back into a sustainable use appropriate to the town centre, whilst any harm to the amenities of residential properties from noise and disturbance can be suitably mitigated with appropriate conditions applied. There's a section in the report that refers directly to that. Uh, and overall, the proposed development will generate what's, what's termed less than substantial harm to the locally listed building and conservation area with substantial benefits. The conditions are indicated in the report, um, just ident identify the, the plans to be um, attached to, to the approval and uh, conditions regarding materials. Um, and there's also a condition that refer refers to the plant and machinery, if, if any is required on the rear, rear elevation, uh, such as air conditioning units or whatever, that, uh, that details have to be submitted in advance first so that our environmental, environmental protection officer can, uh, can assess those before they're installed. And then the final condition is in respect of um, construction vehicles, um, a construction management programme to, to be uh, provided for vehicles visiting the site and bringing materials in. So therefore, overall, the application is recommended for approval, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Sonny, <clears throat> for that detailed uh, report on the application. Uh, Going to move to questions or, or if members seek clarification. Does anybody have anything they would like to hear at this point? Harper. Uh, yeah, I've just had an uh, indication that he's doing it uh, on your button, uh, your mic. Um, if 
it is the bang middle uh, this m b button directly above the, uh, the where you click to speak. If you press that several times, it should go to max volume, uh, and that should hopefully uh, be beneficial for you, John. Thank you. There are one or two points. Whoa! <laughs> that's beautifully clear. Well, that's what an improvement. Yeah. Um, yes, it's not me I wanted to hear. It's everyone else. That's the problem. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic um, to get this building back into some useful uh, use again. Um, it's been empty for far too long, and it's a hugely important building in our town centre, located. <coughs> directly opposite the town hall and what it does it gives character it gives uh, a unique sense of the period of this particular street and um, every effort should be made to um, to to look at it there are several points i wanted to bring up if i may sorry council are they questions or clarification or do you want to save these comments for the debate section of this item yep Please continue then. The first major question I wish to ask is you, uh, you were talking about the interior, which is not part of the, the scheme. Um, first, I want to know why that isn't the case, because the plans that I've seen involve the first floor being raised and considerably raised, and the... Um, second floor being quite tiny, which will have an enormous impact on the building and the, uh, the future use of the building. And I'm wondering why that is not part of the, um, of the application, because it's, uh, I think you, you tell me here, um, internal works are part of the project involving removal of steel, and removal of the second floor and raising of the first floor, including historic timber work and remaining chimney breasts at first and second floor. However, these do not require planning permission and are not therefore considered here. I'm just astonished that they don't require planning permission. Uh, I wonder if you could explain that. Yeah, yes, Chair, the, the building is is not a listed building. If it were a listed building, they would they would require permission to be, to be removed. But in terms of planning permission, um, as it's locally listed only, and not a listed building, there's there's no requirement for for any planning permission for internal works to the building. It's only the external works that actually require any any permission. So whilst we have some details of, of um, or the floor plans at least showing the details. We, um, that there's no requirement, as I say, for, for planning permission. So basically, we just have to accept whatever plan is is forwarded, and we are not in any position to uh, to influence that. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. I think that's rather disappointing, but uh, I can't do any more on that. Um, the other uh, point I wanted to make is the position of the front entrance. Was it not considered to put the central door, the, the doorway in the centre of the building, given the fact that this is a Georgian building? and a very important Georgian building. We all know that Georgian buildings rely on uh, symmetrical uh, layouts of windows and doors, chimneys, etc. And was it not considered to put the doorway in the middle uh, to create that um, symmetric look of the elevation? Thank you. Um, if we could just have the elevation on the screen, it might help. So 
um, originally this building was two was two shops basically two buildings so two shop frontages so the line down the center of, of um, the, sh the new shop front there is is where the the division of the two shop frontages would be um, if you look on the the left side of the of the, the frontage that's to be um, uh, an ATM so there's there's certain requirements for the the scale and the size of that to fit fit within the the frontage um, so the the doorway either had to be one side or the other basically um, so it, it's it's in line with where one of the original shop uh, doorways would have been but unless you have two doorways into the shop, it's either one or it's either one or the other. There's a pillar down the centre which is which needs to be retained, and that's causing structural that would cause some structural issues to remove that. Um, so, so that was the solution we came across. Which we, we did certainly have a number of, of draft schemes um, looking at the, the whole of this frontage as to how it would best work, and that is the that produced the best symmetry that we could that we could uh, find in terms in terms of creating the sort of four four quadrants of the uh, the frontage so that's you uh, everything I, do you want to come back on that john again i think um i think it's unfortunate because um it would have looked a lot better had the doorway been in the center and it could well have possibly probably been a single building way way back um long before it was split into two shops but it's um it's unfortunate that the doorway can't be in the center it would certainly give the aspect some uh, some more legitimacy um than it has and, uh, another quick question I, please i don't want to hog anything but the um the current entrance comes out slightly um from the frontage of the the building is this particular new frontage flush with the um, with the facade, or does it jet out as the current one does? Which we're all delighted to see the end of, by the way, the the current nineteen uh, seventies frontage. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the uh, floor. Oh, sorry, just couldn't hear you when you sat back. <laughs> sorry, um, I don't know if the floor plan might help a little bit on there. I'm not sure if it shows it, but um, the you can't really see on that. Yeah, the the doorway is is this is the first floor anyway. The the doorway is is more or less flush with the building. It doesn't it doesn't project further as as the existing does. Thank you, and finally. Am I correct in saying that the integral parts of the building, namely the front facade, the rear facade, the roof, and the dormer windows are all being retained, whilst there is a new extension going to replace the, the horrible extension at the back? Yes, Chair. Anything further, Councillor Harper? Not for the moment, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Anybody else got any questions or seek clarification on any of the items that have been raised so far? If not, we're going to turn to debating the issue. Uh, does anybody wish to start the debate? Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. So, as I say, the proposal for the repair and a rejuvenation of a shop front that's, that's kind of not currently correctly use, utilised is, in my opinion, quite welcomed, whether that be part of a future high street fund project or not. Um, while any alteration to a heritage asset um, is often a difficult balance to achieve, I believe the design of materials does offer a sympathetic approach, will fit in with the existing street scene. So currently I'm minded to support the recommendation Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goodall. Uh, anybody else wish to uh, join in with the debate? Um, if I may, I'd like to move it, Chair. 
Thank you very much. I will take that as being moved. I will allow a few people, more people to jump in the debate, uh, as is my discretion, uh, before seeking a secondary appraisal. Councillor Harper, you indicated. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I widely, I widely support this application. I think it's welcome, and I think it could well save a historic building that may otherwise be lost. I've been around the uh, the building, courtesy of, of Anna, who was very patient with me, as I looked at every beam, every brick, and um, we worked out what was modern, what was old, and what needed replacing and what didn't. Um, basically, the, the, the frontage is just the four windows at the top, that's the historic frontage. The rear of the, the of those four windows, first floor windows, uh, the brickwork is, is actually, although it's very old, it's very poor, but it's part of the original structure, so it, it needs to be retained and incorporated. Um, the general the general scheme, I think, um, will, will help an awful lot. The interior of the building was horribly mangled in the 1970s with um, steel girders and a lot of the um, timbers were moved and shoved around. I, um, I trust that whatever timbers are reusable, wherever they're reusable, will be used. Um, and as much of the building that is usable will be incorporated into the new design. Um, and hope that uh, you'll be keeping an eye on that happening. Um, Otherwise, I think um, I think we can let this go through with um, with reservations about the the removal of the floor and hiring of the ceiling, which I spoke about earlier, because Georgian buildings do not have great high ceilings or of this type don't have great high ceilings and it's very small rooms upstairs, so we are substantially changing this building. And should the bank go at some point? Um, which so many banks are now doing, um, we're going to be left with a building with a rather voluminous downstairs and a tiny uh, first floor, which may become problematic in the future. Um, but on what we're actually talking about, the, um, the external works, I think we can look at this with a bit of relief, actually, that, it's, that something's being done about this, this lovely, important... Tamworth Building. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Harper. Uh, anybody else wish to jump in for the debate? No, uh, that has been moved by Councillor Summers. Uh, is that an indication to second? Thank you very much. Uh, it's been pros and seconded to approve uh, the application subject to the conditions listed on pages 24 and 25. Uh, can I have a vote of those all in favour, please? Thank you very much, and that is carried. Uh, second application for consideration this evening uh, is planning application 0324-2021, uh, which is uh, the Owards Road update record. Um, this originally came before the committee in January um, uh, and was deferred uh, and is now prepared on our agenda in June. I'm going to hand over to Glenn for this to take us through uh, the update report. Thank you, Chair. Yep, that's correct. So the application was one that was previously discussed on the 18th of January um, for a scheme of up to 14 dwellings off Overwoods Road in Tamworth. The application was deferred for consideration so that further information can be obtained regarding the ecological impacts um, required through survey work and brought forward and the findings of ecology conservation survey report to be brought back to the committee to assess the determination of the application. As this is an item that is a deferred item related to a specific topic, in this case ecology, the consideration should be based along this. The original report has been made available for those that weren't in attendance at that meeting on the 18th of January. As a, result of the, as a result of the deferral, relevant surveys have now been provided and concluded that no reptiles have been found in the vicinity. 
In addition, a number of best practice precautionary measures have been outlined and will be secured by appropriately worded conditions. These are at condition 5 and condition 6 in the report. With regards to bats, the trees identified as having low to moderate potential are proposed to be retained. There is one tree with low potential and is due to be removed and is recommended that again best practice precautionary measures are to be followed and this has been secured by the imposition of condition number 13. Finally, the supplementary report also discusses a new policy change regarding first homes. These are a new type of affordable housing which should now be requested in all planning applications, particularly major applications requesting affordable housing. As a result, the proposal here will mean instead of the blanket affordable housing provision, first homes will now need to be provided. All the other considerations remain unchanged from discussions and considerations of that meeting of the 18th of January 2022. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Glenn. Um, any questions or clarification uh, from members of the committee on the update report? If no one's got any questions or seeks clarification, we will move on to debate regarding um, uh, this uh, update report. Anybody wish to kick off? Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a, an application for 14 homes. Um, a percentage of these have to be affordable. Um, how many is that? 20%, so forgive me, it's in the report how many exactly that is, but it's a 20% percentage. Three, I believe. Is it three, Richard? Just verify that for me. Yep, three. Quick maths. And what will these three homes uh, consist of? Um, are they single, one, two, three bedrooms? What's, what's the what's the layout of them? Yeah, thank you. Two of the affordable units are to be affordable rent, and one will be shared ownership. Um, the bedroom numbers aren't specified, but I wouldn't imagine there's going to be any more than three beds. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Harper, uh, in the original report, 6.4.2, while it doesn't give uh, specific house sizes, um, uh, it does indicate that two of them are affordable units uh, to be for a rent and one a shared ownership. Obviously, that's uh, been slightly amended. Um, but no, we are, I, I have to refer to Glenn's uh, answer regarding the, the, the numbers. Um, we seem to have moved back into questions, though. Does anybody, oh, so I'll, I'll move back into questions. Uh, does anybody have any further questions? If, if I can, just uh, just a supplementary. We did at the previous um, meeting, um, I did ask for clarification of what constitutes affordable housing. Um, I really want to know because we, um, we've we said in the past, I've looked it up on the internet and I can't find what the actual criteria is. And I want to know what Tamworth Borough Council's criteria is for an affordable home. Because we all know that an affordable home for a millionaire could be considerably higher than someone on very limited budget. So if we could at some point have some clarification on how we determine what is an affordable home, I would be very grateful. Thank you. Uh, yes, I did have a chat with uh, officers earlier today about an additional training session that isn't on the current schedule, so um, I'll be very happy to include that on a training agenda for you, Councillor Harper. I am indebted. Uh, before we move on to the last, uh, last call for any questions or uh, anybody seeking any clarification. In that case, Councillor Goodall, you indicated for debate. Thanks, Chair. Um, I supported this application originally, and um, I've seen nothing in the in the update that that kind of changes my my mind, my opinion. Um, it is for 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 outline um, planning permission, and, and while taking on board some of uh, Councillor Harper's 
comments. While it says 14 dwellings, it might be it might be less, it might be a little bit more. So and therefore, the um, the numbers of uh, affordable housing may change. It would be my understanding. Um, yeah, just need to clarify that it is actually it is for 14 properties and it won't it's not up to it's not but it's not going to be above it will be 14. Okay, thank you. Just still doesn't change my mind happy to support the application. Thank you very much councillor Goodall. Anybody else wish to join in on the debate? Councillor Summers. Thanks. Um, as it was for ecological purposes, the update, and it's passed that test, I'm happy to move it. Thank you very much, Councillor Summers. Anybody wish to debate uh, any further, or uh, does anybody wish to second Councillor Summers' recommendation? Councillor Cooper. Yeah, um, I'm happy to second. Uh, thank you. These microphones seem to turn off uh, when another person turns turns them on. So if I from now on, if I call on you, uh, just press the button and my mic will go off automatically, uh, and then leave it on until the next person uh, turns theirs on. I think is the most uh, appropriate. So we don't have, keep having these delays. Uh, yeah. So it's been moved and seconded. Does anybody else wish to debate any further before I take a vote? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, nobody else wishes to debate. So, Council Summers, you have moved this uh, in accordance with the amended uh, conditions being applied. Uh, that's correct. Yes. Correct. Thank you very much, and seconded by uh, Councillor Councillor Cooper. Sorry. Uh, take a vote in favour of approving this, please. Uh, all those against. Thank you very much. That uh, is uh, carried. Uh, the third item on the application for consideration this evening is planning application 0011-22, uh, 2022, uh, 3 Mickleton, pages 45 to 50 of your agenda pack. Um, I'm going to hand over to Andrew to go take through this report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Andrew Davis, Planning Officer, uh, uh, dealing with this particular case. Um, the application 0011 2022 um, is for a change of use from C3 dwelling to C1 boarding and guest house, um, and is a retrospective application. Um, originally, the application was to be determined as a delegated decision. Um, however, it was um, called in to the committee by Councillor Doyle in February uh, of this year. Um, the reasons for calling it in were uh, issues raised by local residents regarding um, the use of the property and um, various concerns that had been put to him. The retrospective application has come about because the, um, uh, the, the dwelling has been in use as a, an Airbnb facility now um, since January of uh, 2020 um, and um, has done so without having received um, permission for the change of use from C3 dwelling to C1 um, boarding or guest house. The, um, the property is located at 3 Mickleton, a residential cul-de-sac within Stony Delph. Um, it's typical of the area and um, is located in a position that means it is um, uh, obvious to uh, all of the um, residents of uh, both um, Mickleton and also Marset to the rear. It's a four bedroom property um, with um, three double bedrooms um, and uh, a single bedroom. Um, the property uh, has been advertised on the Airbnb website um, since it began its use in that form. Um, and uh, whilst originally it was um, advertised on the website as being available um, as a four bedroom property for up to 10 guests, um, the applicant has 
uh, taken steps to uh, amend that and um, uh, approximately a month ago um, reduced the number of um, guests from 10 down to 6 uh, and that is what is now advertised on the, uh, uh, on the Airbnb site. The, uh, the policies uh, that uh, are relevant to this application um, are those uh, relating to uh, culture and tourism, design of new development um, and um, uh, the car parking standards set out in Appendix C of the local plan. Following the, uh, the consultation exercise, uh, we received some uh, 15 letters of objection uh, to the proposal. Um, and three letters uh, in support of it. Uh, the letters of objection raised various concerns, um, primarily to do with um, occasional antisocial behaviour um, of guests um, uh, using the, uh, the building um, and car parking. The, um, the letters in favour of the, uh, the application um, related to uh, firms which provide services to uh, the, um, uh, the owner of the, um, the property um, and also um, one neighbour who um, was satisfied that problems that had been apparent with the, um, uh, the property in the uh, earlier part of 2020 had since been resolved. In terms of the planning considerations, uh, the key considerations for us to uh, look into related to the principle of the proposed change of use, the amenity impacts of the proposed development on uh, surrounding neighbours, um, and specifically parking considerations. With respect to the principle of the proposed change of use, um, the, uh, the change of use from uh, C3 dwelling house to C1 is not one that is facilitated by uh, permitted development rights, um, and therefore requires planning approval um, for that change to be made. There are other forms of development that could be um, uh, gone to um, through a change of use, however, from a, um, a dwelling, um, such as to C4, um, to, um, which would be to change it to a house of multiple occupancy, um, which would allow for six um, non-related um, residents within a, a house, a single um, house. The other policies that we looked, uh, looked at in respect to this were policy EC5 culture and tourism, um, which stated, states that um, the tourist economy is to be promoted within Tamworth, um, but it, any development within that tourist economy should be to the benefit of local residents as well as to um, uh, any tourism uh, improvements that are uh, created. Um, design of new development policy EN5 um, is something that um, we have to consider with respect to um, design uh, implications normally. However, as this um, particular development does not involve any physical changes to the, um, to the building, um, but is, is simply to do with the, um, the use of the building, the uh, relevant part of EN5 um, is that that um, considers the uh, minimisation or mitigation of uh, environmental um, impacts um, on uh, uh, prospective occupants or, or existing occupants of neighbouring land, um, including um, noise impacts um, amongst the, uh, the more regular ones considered with physical development. Um, also, Part H of the, um, the policy um, and uh, Appendix C of the um, uh, local plan requires us to consider um, highway safety and servicing requirements um, and the, uh, the adopted parking standards um, as set out in the local plan and how any development um, relates to those. Um, in terms of the amenity impacts of the development, uh, the change of use um, has, as already noted, uh, been implemented without approval and there have clearly been um, negative impacts in terms of amenity of um, those people that live uh, in the surrounding area. Um, the amenity impacts have generally arisen from some guests, not all, behaving in a manner which has caused disturbance to neighbours 
um, or by neighbours um, being on a, uh, we're told, a frequent basis impeded by car par parking um, on um, Mickleton, which the, uh, the property itself has not been able to accommodate. Um, there has been one occasion only of a formal complaint made to uh, the council, as recorded by the environmental protection team, uh, which related to um, noise matters um, in uh, July of 2020. Since then, through the environmental protection um, arm of the council, uh, there have been no further complaints received. Um, this process of the, um, the planning application that we're considering, um, this has, however, um, brought about numerous um, letters of objection from residents who have stated that there are various problems that they face that have, to some degree or other, continued beyond uh, July 2020. <coughs> it would appear that the, um, uh, the most significant issue um, within the amenity impact concerns relates to large groups of people um, using the, um, uh, the property. Um, and um, just as a reminder, originally it was advertised as being uh, for uh, up to 10 guests at a time. Um, already that has been reduced by the, the applicant to six. When looking at the, um, uh, the nature of the, um, uh, the proposal um, and whether the amenity impacts could be um, mitigated so as to make it um, more acceptable, um, there were a number of things that um, have been taken into account and um, looked at. And it has been um, determined that the proposal could be made acceptable um, if conditions are applied that would limit the number of guests and would maximise the amount of parking available at the site and also introduce um, a means of keeping a register of guests that would be available to the council um, to, uh, uh, to enable it to ascertain at any time um, just what level of occupancy has been um, uh, achieved at the, uh, uh, at the facility. It's proposed, therefore, that the, um, the application be approved with conditions and that those conditions um, are as follows. Uh, the development hereby permitted shall only be carried out in accordance with the application form and location plan. The maximum number of guests permitted at the dwelling is to not exceed six at any one time throughout the life of the development. A written register must be kept of all guests accommodated and make it available following a reasonable request from the local planning authority to ensure compliance with the maximum permitted number of guests and for the garage to be retained for the purposes of a garage only and no other use be permitted in the garage and it shall be made available at all times to guests for the parking of a car for the lifetime of the development. Jim? Thank you very much, uh, Andrew, for that. Uh, we do have some speakers on this item. Uh, Councillor Doyle uh, is in the... Before we engage with the discussion, could I please talk to the uh, head planning officer and the head, the, sorry, the chair for planning, please. I have a matter to discuss in private. If I could say, Chair, that um, the planning committee comprises of a process, um, and that process is, is for members to have reports before them um, and uh, consider and make the decision based upon the report, but your constitution actually allows speakers to attend um, over a time period, and therefore the situation is that you will not be permitted to speak to the Chair in private. Okay, I'll do it in public. It's unfortunately, I have to Councillor Jason Jones uh, picked up this patch issue originally and I picked it up from him. So he's not entitled to vote on this application because he w he's already involved. Uh, no. Uh, do you want me to make a declaration, Chair? Uh, if you'd like to make a late declaration of interest, Jason. Yeah. Uh, 
I'll make a late one if that's okay, Chair. My bad. Uh, yes. Uh... Yes, please. Yeah. I, I, no one informed me or of the of the officers informed me of a conflict of interest. Uh, J yes, Jason, it is, it is up to all councillors to um, uh, declare an interest themselves and if they are not sure to seek advice uh, from the council's legal team. I'm just going to, do you just want to come in there? Oh, I, I have an interest. Um, so Yeah, uh, I was the one who raised the issue with Councillor Doyle originally. Uh, I, I wasn't aware if it was, might have been a interest, conflict of interest of me to raise the uh, to vote on this matter. But if if, it, if it's a conflict of interest, then I'll happily to leave. That's okay, Chair. Well, that's, that's uh, I'll, I'll... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, in future, if you're not sure if you need to declare an interest uh, and you don't want to speak to the legal team, I'll speak oh, to them. Right. This is the first time. I understand that, but if you, again, if you're not sure, I, I, I like to think I'm a reasonably approachable person. If you, if you don't want to speak to the team directly uh, or straight away, uh, speak to me in future, okay? Okay, my apologies, sir. No problem. Right, okay. Um, so we do have public speakers on this one. Uh, Councillor Dawes, you're in the, in the chair already. Uh, I'm going to invite you to remain in there and go first. Uh, you know the procedure by now. You have three minutes. Uh, unlike the previous chair of this committee, I'm not going to give you a one-minute countdown because it's going to be on the screen. Um, I might be slightly lenient with a few seconds overwards uh, over the time limit, um, but everyone will get that if I am. Uh, so please, when you're ready, the time will start. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. As I stand before you, I am looking to represent members of the Stony Dale community. These residents live in one of the quietest parts, as you'll realise when reading through the 17 objections. The property the application refers to be specifically classed as a private dwelling in the covenant deeds. I'm reminded of the planning training and shall refer to material considerations. Firstly, noise and smell. The property has largely been the venue for workmen, working away from home looking to blow off steam, also weddings and hen parties. This becomes quite evident when you read through much of the feedback and the objections. A poor example has been this weekend, which has seen black bin bags and the black bin left out on the curb for rats to filter through over a week before collection is due. Such an establishment needs proper management. In terms of privacy, many of the families are senior in their years and looking to enjoy their hard-earned retirement. So find the intrusion meant by guests an invasion of their privacy. Through the applicant's own admission on Airbnb posts, he is unable to guarantee the numbers attending or the actions he's booking guests take. In three years, this has managed to upset and alienate his surrounding neighbours through having to contend with noisy guests weekdays and weekends. For access and travel and traffic, also on frequent occasions, the guests either staying or visiting at the property have caused parking issues with local residents, blocking driveways and many accounts of inconsiderate parking and issues when asked to move on. The agent acting on behalf of the applicant states that the usual level of vehicles at the property is two, yet posts and photos from the neighbourhood indicate otherwise. As commented, a large number of the visitors to the property have been contractors. This has often resulted in large commercial vehicles and machinery being parked in the street as they cannot fit onto the driveway. I ask you to reflect on the issues involved when trying to get the county council and the police to take action when dealing with street parking. There is no condition requiring a limit in the number or type of vehicles parking off the premises and the borough council are in a poor position to enforce any. In terms of the fear of crime, Using the applicant's own words, I quote from the following from October last year. This guest smoked cannabis in the house and booked the house for only three guests when in fact eight guests used the house and all five beds were slept in. This simple statement is the applicant's own acknowledgement that he has been unable to exercise control over his guests. In objection letters, they highlight alleged drug usage in the form of the cylinders left in and around the property. The agent points to the use of CCTV surveillance to control guests, again, a retrospective act. 
Finally, as stated by Tungmouth's own planning department, this is currently no specific policies or guidance. So where does enforcement stand? So far, there has been none, even through the pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. That's pretty much bang on three minutes. Well, so well done on the, on the, on the timing for that. Well done. Um, so we have another, uh, I've got up there now. Uh, another uh, uh, speaker. Uh, well, I've got several more speakers on this one. Uh, I've got resident, local resident, uh, Lyle J. Lewis, speaking as an objector. Yep. Um, same procedure for Councillor Doyle. Uh, three minutes. Uh, it will start uh, whenever you start speaking, OK? Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members of the com Planning Committee. Thank you for letting me speak to this evening on behalf of the concerned residents of Mickleton, Mossdale and Marset in relation to this. Having read the officer's report on the application, we acknowledge the reference has now been made to the ongoing antisocial behaviour that we have suffered over the past two and a half years and described in the objections. We were not advised we should continue to submit complaints um, to the council on the matter after it started looking into the issue. Had this been clear, there would have been many more registered complaints. That aside, there are three key facts mentioned in the off not mentioned in the officer's report, which we think we need to raise. The first is that the application in this um, is a direct com conflict with the covenants imposed on the property. Now, the report doesn't mention that the covenants are actually imposed as conditions of the original wider development planning approval, T2220, specifically condition five, which mentions that the dwellings have to be private domestic dwellings to prevent the establishment of any business, commercial or industrial use in interests of the residential amenities of the area. Changing the use class of property from C3 to C1 is clearly in a breach of this original planning condition. We are not clear what material factors have changed now that means the condition is no longer required to protect the amenities of the residential area. Secondly, whilst the applicant has made the case for this in support of tourism, a large number of visitors, as previously mentioned, have been contractors and their large vehicles cannot fit on the driveway. This combined with the fact that the, the proposal does not meet the current parking policies and no conditions limiting the number or type of vehicles parking further adds to the issue. While off-street parking may not be a borough issue, granting this approval will prevent other residents from having unrestricted access to their properties and also allow the safety issues from footpaths being blocked to continue. Further, it seems a perverse argument in this instance, as it would also add to the lack of housing stock that is a significant uh, issue by the council's own omission in the housing strategy. Surely maintaining the existing available housing stock for domestic purposes would be the first step in the council achieving its main housing and community uh, priorities. Finally, and most importantly, the planning officers have clearly agreed with us that the number of people and vehicles at the property would be inappropriate. Uh, sorry, the large numbers would be inappropriate. However, no mention on how the council should enforce these conditions and what repercussions of breaches should, should there be breaches of these conditions. For instance, would the applicant be required to revert uh, the property to C3 designation? Unlike a normal ho hotel or BNB in a CE1 category, there is no on-site presence in these proposals. And by that applicant's own admission, as previously mentioned, he, there is uh, evidence he cannot control it remotely. If the impact of using a property as an Airbnb was no different to a normal household, we would not be in this room today. We feel these factors show strong reasons why this application should be rejected. Thank you very much. Uh, two bang on three minutes, so well done to you, you as well, Mr Lewis. Um, we've got uh, another two more speakers. Um, we've got uh, Darren, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher your name, Pazagalia. Um, yeah, um, if you'd like to move over to the, the chair, uh, make yourself comfortable. Um, same, same rules, uh, uh, apply three minutes um, and we'll start whenever you uh, turn your microphone on, which is the, obviously the speak button on the, on the thing, uh, and start speaking. Um, good evening, uh, my name is Darren Putsalia, I'm the applicant and owner of this holiday let. And I'd like to explain to you why I believe I ought to be allowed to continue operating. Um, firstly, there are economic benefits to town, such as Tamworth, wanting to attract visitors to the town and to enjoy its many attractions. Uh, many of the guests stay because they wish to visit, for example, Drayton Manor Park and Zoo, or the Snow Dome, or attend weddings in local hotels. 
Um, this benefits many other businesses in Tamworth, such as restaurants, pubs, shops, indeed the cleaning business, Pinney and Press, who service my property. We have a representative here tonight, Kerry Ann, and the laundrette business, Right Wash. I understand, though, that the council has an obligation to listen to its residents and consider their concerns. As a past long-term resident of Mickleton of over 20 years and a responsible business operator, I too genuinely wish to minimise any disturbance to my former friends and neighbours. Now, I must admit, in the beginning, when I first started this in 2020, I was naive. There were some disturbances, mainly during lockdowns, but I put measures in place to prevent these reoccurring. Things such as house rules, where people have to stay inside the house after 9.30. They can't use the garden or the outside drive. That had some effect, not completely. Then I put imposed a £200 deposit, um, only if house rules are observed. Just displaying that in the advert, put a, everything into perspective, and there were no more disturbances since I put that rule into place. Um, other things that I have put into place, as already been mentioned, is limiting the number of guests from 10 to 6. I've done that already about a month ago. And then other conditions that I will look to do immediately, if I'm approved within a week, is requiring clients to park on the drive or in the double garage and not on the road. So this will be four spaces in total that they can have. They will not be allowed to have more than four cars or vehicles, and if so, they would lose their £200 deposit. Again, this will put a, the end of the parking problems to rest. Maintaining a register for guests, of course, I can do that. It's not an issue at all. And also discontinuing the use of the garage as a games room, because that did cause disturbances, people playing table tennis in the evening. So I would put that into place as well. The planning department have recognised these measures and hence they are recommending to approve the change of use to holiday, holiday letting, subject to the outline conditions I've just mentioned. Black bins, I have a separate company that if there are any black bins after bin day are, are not taken away, they come and remove them within two days. So there are... Thank you, Mr. Bazzali. Three minutes is up. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have another uh, supporter of the application, uh, Mrs. Jo Mrs. Kerry? Yeah. If you'd like to come forward, again, same rules apply. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, time will start when you're three minutes. Uh, your three minutes will start when you start speaking. Hello, um, I'm a resident of Mossdale. I've been there approximately 20 years. Um, I know Darren as a former neighbour. I know many of the people surrounding me as my current neighbours. It's fair to say, <coughs> excuse me, that initially I shared all of the concerns that everybody else had and did raise an objection with Darren about some of the activity that occurred in the summer of 2020 when apparently the property was being let out and being abused by people coming into the area, taking advantage of the more relaxed lockdown rules. However, <coughs> in reporting these to Mr. Pazzaglia, he did take prompt and quick action to resolve them. And I personally, as a resident of the, the neighborhood, have not had any further concerns and relatively satisfied that the activities are not causing me any undue stress. Um, I think mainly the issues that I had were back in 2020 related to noise. My garden shares the same outlook as Darren's. It's I am two properties away from him, so relatively close, about 20 metres between the two garden areas. And when sat outside, you could hear it. I've not had any instance to listen to any noise and bad language partying since that time in 2020. So as far as I'm concerned, as regards to the issues that were um, occurring in 2020, I've not got anything further. I'm reasonably satisfied. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Gary, uh, uh, for your uh, speak tonight. Thank you to all speakers. Uh, we're going to move on to questions, or if members seek clarification uh, from uh, officers. Uh, so, open the floor, Councillor Summers. Thank you. One clarification for me: um, the uh, maximum number of guests permitted at the dwelling is not to exceed six at any one time throughout the life of the development. Does this, when when they define guests, do they mean those attending for perhaps a party, or do they mean occupants for the purposes of residing in the house for the time? The um, the intention there is um, for uh, the number of people actually residing during a, a short let of the property. Um, we have not explored in any detail how additional people who visit the property but do not stay there um, could be treated. You, you, you can't. Sorry, no. Uh, you've had your opportunity to speak during the during the procedures, um, so I can't allow uh, members of the public to, uh, to speak any further. I do apologise. Uh, Councillor Summers, you wanted to come back, and then my obvious question to that is: Can we explore that now, or could it be explored? It, it, it's a question of what is enforceable. And um, this is one of the things that, along with many aspects of this proposal, um, such as car parking external to the site that we've looked at, ages of guests, it's one of a number of things that, that would not be um, viable for us to actually enforce um, the, 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 um, uh, the, the ability for the council to do so is just not there. If I may. Okay, if we can't enforce it, is it something we could condition in any case? I, I think the, uh, the panel is quite clear on that. Um, because we can't enforce it, it's not a viable condition. Anything further, Councillor Summers? Councillor Cooper, you indicated. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, with regards to the guests and with there being a limit of six guests, does that include children? So if, if a guest was to bring a child along with them, would that be included in the total six? Um, yes, it would. Um, as I've just mentioned, we, we have looked at a whole raft of potential conditions. Um, but when we look at, for example, ages of guests we are not legally in a position where we can um, distinguish between different ages so the um, the total of six is six in total whether they are adult or children anything further councillor cooper uh, yes chair uh, how do we have an indication of how busy the property is up there the best way I've had of um, trying to assess that is um, by looking at the Airbnb website um, and looking for dates um, of availability. Um, and whilst I can't give you a precise um, uh, rate of, of occupancy by way of days per month, um, certainly when I had last looked at it, uh, there were bookings um, made on the Airbnb website for dates um, right the way through the remainder of this year um, with uh, multiple days each month um, where uh, the, uh, the property had already been booked. Obviously, um, the, the closer uh, months to the date at which I'd looked tended to have more bookings in them. But certainly, um, without being able to, to specify actual figures, um, the impression I had gained was that it, it is popular with guests um, booking it. 
Uh, I've been informed by uh, my legal advice that, uh, Mr. Pasalia, if you, you can inform us about an estimated, the estimated occupancy rate, uh, if you'd just like to reply to that, but nothing further. So if you'd just like to, if you want to reply to on the, the estimated occupancy rate, so you can. Yeah, five, five days a week it's occupied and had one complaint. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cooper, yeah? Thank you, Chair. Uh, final question for me. Um, with regards to um, the policing of the of the, the conditions, um, how will how will that be done? Because it strikes me as it's it's very retrospective. Um, we we find out about it when it's already happened, and actually the policing will probably be done by the by the good residents of Mickleton in a, in a very quiet cul-de-sac, rather than us being proactive and knowing about it before it's an issue. Um, you are right to make that assertion. Uh, the, the nature of, uh, of it is that we would be looking at um, what has happened um, at the, uh, the property rather than be, by being able to um, actually police in a, a there and then at the moment uh, manner. Yeah, I mean, just to clarify, we do have a reactive enforcement service. Um, so we do <coughs> react to, um, to people who complain to us rather than us actually proactively going out and you know, looking for what concerns there might be out there. Can I just come back? Uh, yeah, but e even with the measures that the, that the applicant has put in place, it's still very reactive. I understand we, we are a reactive service, but even the measures that are already put in place is very reactive as well. And I personally worry that, that Mickleton's a very quiet street and you've, you've got to have noise and disruption before it's picked up. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cooper. Any, uh, Councillor Claymore, uh, Councillor Harper, then Councillor Daniels. Just very quickly for clarification, please. Um, <clears throat> referring to condition three of a register of a guest accommodated, um, it refers to um, available following, so my screen's gone off, um, a reasonable amount of time. Um, what would we consider that? It says it's available following a reasonable request from the local planning authority to ensure compliance with the maximum permitted number of guests. Again, I think this is a bit retrospective um, and it's based on what's gone before um, and what would you call a reasonable request? How long would you expect that, to, that information to be provided? The intention there is that um, we would um, expect the, um, the applicant to um, provide uh, all information held within that register um, when requested to do so um, within um, what we would consider to be, as described there, a reasonable um, uh, time frame, um, which would typically be um, one to two weeks, no more than that. come back on that and what would be the purpose of doing that what would be the purpose of knowing who'd stayed there the purpose is not to know who has stayed there um, but to ascertain that the um, the condition limiting the number of guests to six has been adhered to that concerns me slightly um, that we could have a situation where the applicant is saying it's only six, but then we're having reports that are far in excess of that from people down into um, in Middleton. That concerns me. Thank you very much, Councillor Claymore. <laughs> Councillor Harper, you were next. Thank you, Chair. Um, right. Uh, the first thing, um, I personally take a very dim view that this uh, business has been operating without planning permission for a, a considerable while. Um, I, I'm not happy with that. But the thing I want to know, if I can and ask, are there any similar schemes operating in the area? Any four-bedroomed homes that have been turned into hotels in the area? 
just so that we can have some idea of what happens when when these are indeed converted. This is the the first application that we've had for a property of this size. We have um, had one application um, in um, recent months for a much smaller um, for, uh, property um, in the Geoway Lane area, um, which was for no more than two guests, um, if, if my memory serves me right. Um, so consequently, we haven't dealt with one of this size. Um, what we do know, though, is that if you look at the Airbnb website, um, there are numerous properties within the wider Tamworth area and area surrounding Tamworth that are published as, as being available uh, to book on that website. Um, I personally am not aware of any issues having been raised uh, in mm -hmm. relation to, to, to any others. So I, I don't have an immediate comparator that I could put to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm correct in saying that if we accept this and we pass this, we're setting a precedent for Stony Delph that will, um, that will set the bar for any future applications. just say that um, it, it won't set a precedent on the basis that you as the planning committee have to deal with every application on its own merits, you know, based on the policies and the information before you. Um, so, um, you know, whilst I note that the point that you've made about the precedent um, argument, uh, that would not be a good enough reason to refuse the application based upon the premise that every application is on its own merits. Thank you very much. I, I am aware of that. The point I wanted to make was that I wanted to um, just ascertain that this was indeed something that has not happened here before, um, and all of the other, all of the the things that we've got to take into account, and particularly the um, the objections raised by the people, the uh, neighbours. Um, we need to know if this has happened before, and it hasn't. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Harper. Councillor Daniels. Good evening. Um, it's my first planning committee, so apologies if this is not an appropriate question. But regarding some of the complaints on parking, are we allowed to know any of the particulars about those issues? Please don't worry if that's a no. <laughs> I'm happy to um, really just um, sort of summarise some of the objections that have been been raised um, by uh, neighbours when it comes to parking, um, and there have been some um, mention uh, by uh, certain residents of uh, multiple vehicles uh, of a commercial nature, uh, as had been mentioned by Councillor Doyle. Um, the reports of that that I've received through this process have not, however, been widespread, but they have been mentioned um, on uh, a number of occasions. Um, multiple cars, um, when um, the guest house has been um, booked um, by large groups, um, which have clearly not been able to be accommodated on the driveway, um, which will currently only take two cars, um, resulting in parking um, on, the, um, uh, on the street itself. So um, whilst I don't have any specific details of, of parking to, to, to share, um, it, it is clear that parking um, mainly by cars, but occasionally parking by commercial vans has been an issue at times. Uh um, one final question, thank you. Um, clearly you've been on the Airbnb website and I've been very fortunate to be a guest of Airbnb before. Um, as I read on their website, um, as a guest you'll fear the negative review that can result in you being both blacklisted as hosts can be too. 
Um, if guests are found to be violating the Airbnb rules, they can be kicked off the platform and neighbours can complain to Airbnb. I wondered, do you know if anyone has complained to that website as well as to yourselves? Thank you. I have no knowledge of that. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Anderson and Andrew, for uh, answering that. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Um, with regards to the vehicle issue and the drive, with uh, the, there being space for two vehicles on the drive, that, that drive doesn't look large. And with the reference of commercial vehicles being used, what, what types of commercial vehicles are we talking about? Are we talking about large transit vans or are we talking about the, the smaller sort of Vauxhall Connect vans that you get? I've not been given that level of detail. What I've been told is there have been occasions when multiple vans have been parked in the vicinity or even on um, neighbouring uh, roads. But as for precise types and sizes, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, okay. No, I understand the, the level of detail. It's just that I suppose for me, um, it, you know, you'd struggle to get two large commercial vans on that drive. Um, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Cooper. Anybody else got any questions or anything they'd like clarification on? Open up the debate then. Who'd like to start? Councillor Goodall. Thanks, Chair. So, the property is a four bedroom detached house in a quiet cul de sac. And at this point, I'm not entirely convinced the property is suitable as a boarding house. I mean, I guess to start off with. And while taking on board the comments from both residents and the applicants, still have some concerns with regard to the antisocial behaviour that's been reported and the measures that are in place to constrain the number of occupants at one time. I don't know. I'm just not convinced that that's perhaps can be made robust enough. That said, I'm mindful I don't want to suppress the tourism opportunities coming to Tamworth, and I think that's quite important. So. I'm, um, I'm slightly undecided at the moment, but I'm, I'm, I'll listen to uh, what everybody else has to say. As we all will, uh, Councillor Goodall, who we indicated. Uh, Councillor Taymor. Yes, um, like starting with Councillor Goodall, I'm slightly undecided as well. Um, one thing that does concern me is the applicant um, suggesting that he will have a £200 deposit rule in place. Um, how will you know if the house rules have been broken? He won't be there on the premises. Um, so he's going to set house rules. Um, how does he know that they're being observed? So for that, I, um, I'm still not convinced. Councillor Daniels. Um, just having gone on the Airbnb website, as a guest, you can read certain rules about um, what's known as the quiet neighbourhood, advice for parking, you know, there's ways in which hosts can ensure that guests behave in a way that is going to be amenable to that area. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Councillor Harper wants to join in the debate, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've got a problem with this. Um, the principal change of use from C3 to C1, um, it's, is this a suitable place for a hotel, boarding house, whatever you wish? It's surrounded by residents who have um, bought their homes, not, want, not necessarily expecting to be living next to a hotel. Uh, now, I know that's not a planning issue, but... Um, the obvious uh, problems that will come, and they will come, from um, from a house that's got multiple application, uh, 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 occupation is the word I'm looking for, sorry. Um, noise, privacy, parking, all going to be problems. You cannot have a house with six people, if all those six people are home, and... The mum and dad of one of them turns up. Uh, are you going to? Is somebody going to be there to eject them or not allow them entrance? Of course they're not. So it's 
it's therefore going to be up to the members of the uh, the neighbours, the, the surrounding people, to enforce um, what happens here. And I think that's a totally um, inappropriate thing to be doing. And um, I think that uh, it's unacceptable to put that sort of a responsibility on the neighbours. Um, we've already said that we're setting a precedent. It may not be a, a, a planning matter, but um, we have got to look after the interests of the residents of Stony Delph. They have pulled in their objections, and I think the objections they put forward are very valid and stand up to scrutiny absolutely I can't see anything with this. So I think this is an undesirable application for many reasons, um, particularly on the, um, on, the, on the principle that we're, we're going to be setting. And um, I'm afraid that I will be um, picking the residents, the neighbours of Stony Delph on this particular issue because I think uh, their quality of life will be damaged and I don't want to see that happen. And so I will be voting against this application. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's our responsibility as a committee to make sure we are meeting our policies and looking at uh, applications on their merits. And I hate when we say we're setting a precedent because as has been clearly stated to us, we're not. Now, looking at policies, EC5, uh, states that planning applications which deliver a vibrant cultural and tourism economy which will help improve the quality of life of residents and visitors will be supported. Well, I'm minded to think that EC5 has been a little liberally interpreted there because it doesn't appear on the balance of probabilities that this does indeed help improve the quality of life of residents and visitors. And also uh, looking at the impact statement um, in terms of EN5, security, unacceptable noise, pollution, etc. Um, I don't think it meets that policy either. And in terms of uh, the, the car parking, um, part G or H. So I think we, we do actually have grounds here that we could refuse this despite offers of recommendations because I think if we interpret the policies differently, um, and I think we have grounds to, we could indeed move this for refusal, but I'm interested to hear from what I've said what my colleagues think. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. I think there's been some uh, excellent points raised from uh, across my colleagues, uh, especially uh, Councillor Doyle as well, um, in speaking up for the residents of, of Mickleton. Um, there's a few points I'd like to make. Uh, one with the condition that um, the the guest book is made available uh, in, within in two weeks. Um, there's no assurances there that that what what we're going to be reading will be a true representation of what's what's happened. There's no, there's, but we, we you know it, it's just a written out guest book. Um, and secondly, uh, ju just to reiterate the 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 point that Councillor Doyle made is that all all of the um, everything's retrospective. Uh, we, we'd have to have. Uh, disruption to a quiet um, cul-de-sac um, before before we, we, we've been made aware of, of of any any sort of breaches in any conditions or anything else. And uh, for me, I think that's that's uh, very unfair uh, to use the excellent point that John Harper made, Councillor Harper made, that was that uh, it's it it's inappropriate for the local residents to police um, a, a street and, uh, and 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 a business. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Cooper. Any of the other three members who haven't joined the debate want to join in yet? Uh, if this is a recommendation, I will take it, Councillor Goodall, but you've already... Yeah. Thanks, Chair. I was just going to support um, Councillor Summers, which I believe was a, a recommendation to to refuse. Um, so I would second... I, could, I would second that. Uh, Councillor Summers, you did were indicating uh, and erring on the side of uh, a recommendation to refuse. Can I have which planning grounds uh, on 
which you'd like to make that recommendation. Uh, I just want to state that um, I'm, I'm not um, in favour of limiting uh, Airbnb's presence in the town in terms of renting out uh, houses, but I think in this instance, um, I would say it actually contravenes EC5 and AN5 Part G and H. I'm, I'm sorry, Chair. Uh, having said that it contravenes, I think it would be useful for you to actually elaborate. Is it harm to immunity? Is it noise? Is it disturbance? Um, so that the committee can be absolutely clear as to what the reason for refusal is, because you know, clearly, um, if it is a decision against officer recommendation, um, it is it is the committee that have now got to provide those sound, clear planning reasons. So it would be really helpful if you could just elaborate. As deal. Absolutely. Sorry for cutting you off there. Um, I think. Um, it certainly, and that's why I looked to my colleagues for uh, to, to kind of uh, pad this out a little bit. Um, I think in terms of impact on uh, unacceptable noise, um, privacy, highway safety, capacity of the local road network, um, Trying to find the bit that I was at. And I do not believe, um, it, I believe it also contravenes in terms of uh, it does not improve, does not help improve the quality of life of residents. Chair, can I intervene quickly? Sorry, can I just make a point? <clears throat> just say the highway safety, can we just. Pick, you know, just pick that part a little bit because I'm just concerned that we've not really dealt with highways as a severe issue at the minute. So, Chair, if I may, if we can't enforce, um, unless re retrospectively, if we can't enforce how many cars are actually being parked on that drive and enforce uh, the fact that that garage has been allowed for use as, for parking, then we can't expect to condition it. Um, I, I don't think um, we have any way or means of, of enforcing how many people are going to use the drive garage or surrounding roads. So I do believe highway safety would be uh, compromised. That's fine, Chair. Um, um, I, I've noted, instead, I think the point that Glenn was making is, um, is it highway safety that you're talking about or is it the disturbance um, you know, caused you know, by the cars? Um, so just a little point of clarification, because we want to make sure that those reasons for a refusal are robust, uh, because highway safety um, perhaps, um, you know, might not sort of, you know, be relevant because we haven't got anything in the report which actually talks about harm in relation to highway safety or highway dangers. So I'm just wondering whether it's the, it's the, the disturbance that's caused by you know, the parking of the cars that you're referring to. Just clarification on that. Disturbance and amenity. Now, I, I would uh, say that um, what I'm actually doing in going against officer recommendations here by proposing this is, uh, is something I don't do lightly and indeed should be uh, in encouraging my other, especially new colleagues, to take this up prior to the meeting to avoid these situations. <laughs> Councillor Goodall, uh, you did indicate you would be willing to second very early on before that was padded out. Uh, are you still happy to do so? Okay, we have an alternate uh, recommendation uh, to refuse based on the reasons uh, that uh, Councillor Summers gave and the substantive uh, additional detail that has been noted down. Uh, all those in favour of refusal? So, no. Nine. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, those. those against, nobody, those abstaining. As chair, I always abstain yes. unless it's a pl planning, uh, unless it's a uh, casting vote. Uh, so that application has been refused for those reasons. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, planning application uh, D on the agenda. Uh, 0175. Yeah, I'm just going to give everybody a minute to uh, leave the room uh, before we take, uh, before we uh, start any further. I call the committee back to order now. Everybody's uh, left the room. Uh, so yeah, uh, fourth up, uh, item on the applications for consideration this evening is planning application 0175-2022, uh, Bayer Close, uh, Tamworth. Glenn. Thank you, Chair. So yeah, the final item relates to a householder uh, application, householder development for a first floor side extension and single storey rear extension. 21 Bayer Close is a detached property, similar in appearance to the other dwellings in the, on, on the street, with a dual-pitched roof and a single-storey side garage, um, which has been changed into living accommodation. Um, it is a little taller than its neighbour at 21 uh, Bayer Close. The proposals um, are for a first-floor extension that would extend the full depth of the dwelling, um, with uh, no side windows proposed. And the extension will be 5.3 metres in depth and span the width of the original house at 6.4 metres. Um, this, there's a single storey proposal as well. Um, so it's a single, single storey rear extension with a lantern light occupying a central position. I believe we have been plans. Yeah, there. So considerations of design have been uh, duly made and um, referenced in the report, um, considering the uh, Tamworth Design Supplementary Planning Document and the overriding policies of EN5 of the local plan. The proposal is deemed to accord with these principles and the guidance within this supplementary planning guidance. Similarly, amenity has also been fully considered. We note there are always one principle objected to the plans uh, on the grounds that the, firstly, the plans aren't as clear as they could be. Um, however, we do deem that um, they have passed the validation requirements of applications um, in that they are scaled to an appropriate scale and they contain the relevant measurements. And also, there's also overbearing concerns um, relating to the two-storey element. And the proposal, again, has been assessed to be in accordance with that. that it matches in a similar line to the current house with no overlooking windows and um, two principal rooms. Loss of light has also been concerned um, into the garden. But we know the properties are south-facing, so the loss of light we consider to be acceptable in this instance. The single storey extension again is proposed to be of a similar scale that would not be a detriment to amenity, as then highlighted in the report. Drainage is also a concern, however this is a civil matter slash a matter for building control, so when that uh, assessment is made by building control officers, drainage will be fully considered at that point. So in conclusion we have an extension to a residential property um, de deemed to be acceptable, sound, in accordance with relevant design guidance and policy and built in accordance with the um, design guidance that we have at the council. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Glenn. Uh, again, we have speakers on, on this item, so I'm going to invite uh, Mr Ian Ritchie uh, to uh, come take it, uh, the seat uh, as a, an objector. Um, Mr Ritchie, um, I'm assuming you were here for the previous thing, so you uh, explain, explain the rules. So. Uh, uh, <laughs> three minutes will start when you start speaking. If you want to press the button again, because you did keep turning mine off, then. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, as you've rightly pointed out, I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not uh, Patricia, uh, 
Bradshaw. Uh, I am, however, here to uh, speak on her behalf. She's expressed some uh, con concerns uh, and wishes to object uh, to the proposal, um, which she finds not clear. I would like the members to consider her points and hopefully clarify. Um, there is a side window on the first floor level which currently faces the side of number 23. This window will now face a blank two-storey gable less than three metres away. Taking account of the daylight factor, this would not appear to meet the requirements of the usual 25 degree rule. This room is, this window actually currently serves a bathroom, but it was previously a bedroom and that was its sole uh, window. Other properties in Bayer Close presumably have a similar situation. The general character of Bayer Close is pairs of semi-detached properties with gabled frontages and distinctive gaps between at first floor level. The introduction of this first floor addition tight up to the boundary changes the pattern and rhythm of the street scene and if widely adopted would end up as a continuous two-storey terrace. Number 11 has been extended many years ago in a similar fashion but hopefully urban design has progressed since then. <clears throat> Um, the neighbour questions the accuracy of the width on the drawings as it appears to her that it overlaps her own ownership. However, this is a legal rather than a planning issue. However, clearly a party wall agreement will be required. There will be some practical challenges in construction terms. The existing carport is being used temporarily for storage following her move to the property and will at some time be removed. She is concerned that the 5.3 metre extension beyond the main rear wall and built tight on the boundary will impose a constraint on any future proposals she may have in mind. Were she to increase the residential footprint at the ground floor level to the current rear of the main building, this would still be set back 5.3 metres from the end of the single storey proposed extension, and any windows or doors would not have the benefit of the 45 degree rule for light and space. What appears to be vents are shown on the plan in the party wall gable at both floor levels and would obviously be blocked by any future extension of number 21. In conclusion, with the large internal office with no windows and equally large store at first floor level, plus three bath shower rooms and a huge rear extension. This represents significant overdevelopment for a modest semi-detached property, as well as constraining a development potential uh, to its neighbour, as well as setting an unfortunate precedent. I know you don't like the use of that word. Uh, the neighbour would request that further consideration be given to the proposal and the impact that they may have on current and potential opportunities for their own development, um, perhaps a less ambitious and more considered approach would be appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ritchie. Uh, we do have a second speaker, representative of supporter, uh, Mr. David Wilkinson. If you'd like to come take the seat, um, I'm going to turn my microphone off, so whenever you're ready, uh, put it on, uh, put yours on, and three minutes will start when you start speaking. Right, um, we were only found out yesterday at two o'clock in the afternoon that this was an open meeting, so we're very ill-prepared. Mr Bowley, the architect, we approached him, he couldn't be here, so it's left to me. Very nervous and everything else. Um, the property was my mum's, she bought it in 58, had it all the while. She passed away last year. So my son and his girlfriend approached us because it was the ideal opportunity to buy a property at the right price to get on the property ladder with the opportunity with the driveway at the side, the rear garden being really large to extend because currently it's only a two bedroom property with a tiny little box room which the neighbours have converted theirs into a bathroom. Um, they just want to put the house together to build it because they want to make it a family home. They're open to get married. They're going to have children, a family, and the house is not big enough. They bought it for opportunity. Now, they put a thing on light about this bathroom. If you look at number 11, and look at number 11 down the road, it's done exactly the way we want to do it, or they want to do it. There was no problem with that one, nobody's ever moaned. But with this one, the same about light, there's actually nine feet between the two properties. I cannot see it, it's south facing, there's plenty of light. I can't see what the problem is. And if it's all to do with that, 
we will be building up to the boundaries with the footing coming back the six inches that bricklayers recommend or planning recommends so we'll be not encroaching onto their property it will all be done from internal so we're not asking to put scaffolding up theirs on their property just want to be a family home thank you uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Wilkinson. Um, Glenn, I just want to clarify: Did you mention this was a call-in? Uh, Correct. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Um, open up for questions, or if members seek any clarification. Sorry, I should wait, shouldn't I? <laughs> Chair, can I um, just because we don't have any pictures of the street scene as such. Can I just clarify whether that's the property? Looking to Debbie as well. Debbie, can you confirm that? Yeah, it's the one on the right on that on that image. Of the two. Anything following that, Councillor Summers, or do you just wanted to just that clarification for now? Thank you. I just uh, find that kind of useful to uh, help decisions thank you uh, any yeah council daniels again apologies for my ignorance and um, linking to a phrase used earlier that we take each application on its own merit um, a point was made about how the first speaker and the extension that they may want to have could be denied or stopped because of this particular build experts would that be the case or again would it depend on each particular situation Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's just not in our gift. Obviously, we can't be clairvoyant. We can't predict what someone might do to their neighbouring property. Yeah, every application on its own merits. This property is able to extend in our mind to the tolerances that's um, on these plans. And uh, that's our considerations that we've made in, in this instance. Anything else? Or anything else? Any further questions or clarification? Who wants to open up debate? That's a lot Thank you, Chair. Um, this appears to be one of those typical um, planning problems which, which regularly crop up. People want to extend their homes rather than move to bigger houses, and um, it happens so often. Um, and whenever anyone extends their house it's obviously going to impinge on their neighbors uh, in some way shape or form um, with regards to um, light i mean I, I know we can't we can't we can't negate for loss of view or um, loss of um, you know atmosphere um, but I can't see how we can do anything with this um, if if what's being proposed um, is, is acceptable to the uh, on planning terms. Um, I think I think most of us would say that <laughs> rather than extending a home, we would prefer people to move to a bigger home and then leave the, the smaller home for someone else in the future. But obviously we can't do that, and uh, I really can't see what we can do here. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. No. Okay, are you, are you just looking at me? I thought you thought you wanted to die for my attention. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that was a hand or a wave. Yeah, oh. Councillor Summers. <laughs> Uh, I'm really sorry to come up with a question during debate, but um, I'm just trying to remind myself and find out whether there were any windows proposed on the side of the property at all. No, from my understanding, there is a, a blank wall. Um, I'll zoom in if I can. Um, can I zoom in? Let's find out. <clears throat> you got that toilet to me. Yeah. No window proposed there. Windows, I believe, on plans like this are drawn like that. And on the side, there's nothing. So, 
it would be a toilet with no window. Um, Yeah, I think they are doing it on purpose now. Um, yeah, uh, oh, of course I'll allow uh, questions if they if they if they do do crop up. Um, did you want to come in on debate at any point, Councillor Summers? On debate, um, I think if if there had been windows, we would obviously I think look to condition that um, they were frosted and uh, uh, they they wouldn't. Um, you know, have any privacy issues then, but um, it doesn't appear to be an issue unless they decided to put windows in later down the line. I was just going to say that the windows proposed at the first floor bathroom, so one would hope for their own, for their own uh, modesty, yes, they would do that. Does anybody want to else jump in on to the debate? There's a recommendation in the uh, report to approve with conditions. Uh, is anybody willing to move that motion? Uh, I've got a plethora of hands, one in a second. The first one I saw was Councillor Cooper. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, I'm going to take a vote of all those in favour. Uh, I don't see... Yeah, that's everybody. So uh, I'm just going to, because I have to, all those against. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, motion is carried. And that, ladies and gentlemen, councillors, is the end of the planning meeting tonight. Uh, thank you for bearing with me on my first uh, one of these. Um, it's, I'm, I'm sure I'll get better at doing these. Uh, but Thank you very much for your attendance this evening and thank you for the officers and the IT staff uh, for doing their part as well. Good evening.